As a number of elections continue today, candidates are hopeful as exercise comes to a close. And judge claims two Nigerian banks should be indicted in Mena's pensions fraud. This is Post Politics. I am Mary Anna Cole. The All Progressive Congress and the People's Democratic Party have expressed optimism about the upturning of the expected victory of the candidates of the All Progressive Grand Alliance, Professor Chukuma Soludo, in the Anambra State Governorship polls held on Saturday. Now, the two parties said if certain anomalies in the polls were corrected, they would emerge victorious in the end. Well, joining us to discuss this are legal practitioner Emeka Mwadioke and program officer Yaga Africa. Gabriel Prince. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you very much. Great. I, I'm going to start with you, Mr. Mwadioke, because um, you are um, obviously uh, in the thick of everything, and you have uh, obviously watched the elections continuously un unfold and unravel. Uh, so far, so good. Uh, the elections were smooth in different parts of Anambra State, but of course uh, in um, Hiala, it did not necessarily hold because of issues such as uh, insecurity and violence. And we could see what happened today. It took a while for the elections to um, start, but then it has come to an end and we're waiting for 9 p.m. for coalition. But let's take an, a, 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 you know, a wider look at the elections uh, in Anambra State even before Saturday. Okay, thank you so much. Um, yes, just like you said, um, I was, uh, I've been in Anambra this like my uh, fourth week running. Um, so I, I, I've uh, actually watched the uh, the elections and the preparation uh, up close. Um, I can assure you that the uh, the run up to the election was uh, quite a feisty uh, one, um, especially because of the issue of uh, insecurity. Uh, and so you see a situation where, because of the the threats and uh, the threat of lockdown especially the one that was to commence on uh, on the eve of the election, there was um, a lot of um, anxiety. And uh, in fact, I was running the streets of, uh, uh, you know, on the eve of the election, and you, you can't even see a soul on the, on the, on the streets. So there was that um, anticipation that probably people will not uh, turn up for the election. But... Um, I guess the the deal that was brokered with um, IPOP, you know, helped greatly to uh, push things to the positive side. And uh, we must really, at this point, give credit to uh, Nzoko Mona, you know, which facilitated the, that deal uh, that was brokered by the traditional rulers and the, 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 the Council of Bishops and Archbishops. Um, that's why even when I saw the, uh, the, the statement saying that uh, the governors were the ones that broke out the deal, I, I almost laughed because um, uh, that's, that's definitely far from the truth. Uh, because um, uh, uh, we are at Unzukumo now, we are in the thick of it, and uh, we know what really happened. Uh, but that's by the way. So essentially, with the insecurity issue out of the way, so to speak, uh, the ground was really set for people to come out and uh, exercise their franchise, you know. And um, I can assure you that the, the turnout was massive. The turnout was really massive, and people were was very because, excited. Because I was in a, I was in Anambra, and um, many many commentators had said that well. They, they commended the Anambrians for coming out this many to vote um, because of what had transpired leading up to the elections. 
But there's also been a trend in Anambra in terms of the number of people that show out to vote or the percentage of people who show out to vote on a normal day. And this wasn't anything really different from what has been, you know, before now. So really, was it a massive um, show up? Yes, yes, just like you said, uh, Anambra has uh, traditionally had uh, low turnout, you know, so to speak, usually uh, hovering uh, below probably 20, 25 um, percent. Of course, I'm not sure it's equally entirely different from what obtains uh, nationwide. Uh, it's just typical of the issue of, uh, you know, um, voter party. You know, which also has to do with the confidence people repose in the electoral process, uh, but and also the the incidence of rigging. Sometimes people feel whether I vote or I don't vote, it doesn't really count. So why should I bother myself? Mm. But I think that you know we can begin to see substantial change, especially with this incidence of uh, electronic transmission of results. So when people see that really they're not going to come and waste their time on election day, you know, that when they vote, their vote's going to count, I definitely see that that's going to improve. But you know also that this is the first time we are trying electronic voting with Anambra, you know, in Anambra State. Mm -hmm. So I believe that going forward, this will help a lot in pushing the numbers as we got uh, um, dealing with voter party which is actually a national uh, issue okay let me come to gabriel prince uh, gabriel you're of yaga and yaga also uh, was part of the uh, situation room and part of the observers at the uh, anambra elections including the one that has happened today uh, but from y a yaga perspective what has been your major deduction uh, from this uh, election in anambra Okay, um, prior to the election, there has always been a concern about security. And security, uh, people were really scared on how to come out and vote, and people are really showing concern because it also affects our deployment at some point whereby our observers are declining at that minute due to security or threat by any members of the community that election will not hold as was declared by, declared by the IPOC members. So that also was due to kind of contingency plan that we have, we are able to embrace that part to get other observers that will be able to more cooperative. But that notwithstanding, uh, prior to any election, mostly we have observed that even in uh, Edo and Ondo, a lot of security challenges do pop up. That's the pre-election phase, right? But when it comes to the actual election, definitely you will see that things pipe down and then election will go down as smooth and you're wondering that uh -uh, prior to this election people are raising concern about security but that being said uh, the Anambrians they try their possible best to see that even in the midst of the security challenge they come out to come and cast their vote which just we estimated uh based on our projection we said that voters turnout is going to be between 10.2 percent to 12.8 percent yeah, Gabriel, just, 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 just hold that thought. Yeah. If you can hear me, Gabriel, can you turn down the volume of uh, whatever, because we're hearing feedback. I don't know if it's a television or a radio, but we're hearing feedback. So if you can turn it down, that way okay. we can hear you better. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you for that. We are doing that right now. All right, great. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So also raise a lot of concern in the cases where people are thinking that nobody will even come out on election day to come and vote. But an embryans try to prove most people wrong, whereby we even have a like, reasonable number of uh, registered voters that came out to cast their votes, which uh, led to the uh, total vote cast that we have today. Mm -hmm. And another issue again, we also see some issue of late deployment of an um, INEX staff and also the Beavers machine which was deployed. You remember in Isoko South, Isoko not INEX uh, pilots, this Beavers machine, they experienced little or no challenge during that period mm -hmm. due to the minimum number of polling units and the number of people that comes out to to participate in that election but looking at anambra anambra is a bigger state and have a wide number of population when it comes to voters and then trying to deploy that technology definitely they encountered a lot of challenges we have like over 45 percent of the units yeah 
we have the behaviors machine mode function here. We also have the one function but fixing just like five pulling units, where in some pulling units, like fifty percent of the pulling units we observe. Nobody and uh, the machine will function and the annual officials were not able to replace it on time, mm. which led to the uh, suspension of the election. So, putting all this together, we see that the election definitely it comes with challenge with INEC to work more harder on it and see how they can be able to improve on the previous machine. Looking at we have like two, we have up like two, we have AKT or Shun and off cycle election that is coming on. It's supposed by I believe by then INEC could be able to improve the system, upgrade it and be able to fix all challenges by the experience in Iron Bra come twenty twenty three. I'm curious, uh, Gabriel, do you also think that maybe the reason why INEC uh, encountered so many, um, you know, problems as they pre prepared for this election, um, that maybe this could be tied to the fact that there was insecurity? Don't forget that some core members had pulled out and these are people who had been prepared for these elections. They had been trained, but then they pulled out last minute. Don't forget, INEC also had issues with the transporters. Um, so... If we're saying that INEC is getting ready for <laughs> Shu Ekiti and Ondo, um, can we say maybe INEC may not necessarily have to deal with the kind of things that they dealt with in Anambra? Maybe it would help them get better? Or do you think that this is a, an INEC problem that needs to be fixed now? Especially when we're also being optimistic about the electronic transmission of uh, results. Is this something that is within INEC's reach? Okay, uh, come to look at this. The issue in the southeast is a peculiar issue, right? And when you go down to the west, where you have the equity and on Oshun, which is coming up next year, and we are not expecting to have issue of high rate of like security and threats to the uh, Nigerian sovereignty in that part of our country, and which my, we are hopeful that we will not have any other security challenge that will be able to hinder INEC from executing their primary responsibility. But notwithstanding, people, you know, they say safety first, and safety is always paramount when it comes to any human survivor. Right. So definitely, it also affects the drop down of withdrawal of some COP members which have been trained already to go and handle this machine. But they will do at the time, it also affects INEC and deployment. So in terms of logistics, also the road transport, but I also have to comment the road transport because they showed a lot of bravery in terms of deploying INEC staff to various locations. And the uh, deployment of security officials from different parts of the country by the police and the joint task force, it really helped and provide safe haven. And if you look at it, that was even the reason why election was not able to conduct in Iala and mm -hmm. some part of some part of the LGS due to the high areas that we are. Prior to the election in Gala, there was a report of explosion, and there was also a lot of report of gunshot and killings in the state. So it will be quite unwise for INET to say that they will deploy their staff in the kind of volatile area, even being prompt what are being informed about the security intelligence that is maybe security intelligence and how they should be able to conduct their self there and now that ELR was being conducted today and still yet you see that definitely they have to channel their energy their security and get their best staff to deploy to that particular local government so that election will be able to go down smoothly yeah so security is always a problem and definitely INEC they really tried. They are, could have to comment INEC in this aspect. There are high level apps and also security agents that are here to help to secure the INEC staff and also the voters as well. It has really played down a great deal. Okay. okay, let me come back to you, uh, Baisa Omadi. Okay, um, I, when I started the conversation, I did say that the other uh, candidates from the other political parties, aside from APCA, uh, a bit hopeful that um, Ihiala will be a game changer. Uh, it will be, um, you know, uh, for, in fact, both Valentine Ozibo and, uh, of course, Andy Uba uh, is hoping that they will get victory uh, by the time these results are um, announced. We're not here to preempt the results. But then uh, we know that Ihiala has a, a, a 148,000 registered voters. Uh, but again, you and I just quickly talked about, um, you know, the percentage of people who show up to vote. So um, can we examine why these um, candidates are so hopeful 
uh, about Tihiala, even when we know that 148,000 voters will ne not necessarily show up to the, um, you know, the polls? Yes, um, you're quite right. Uh, because if we go by the percentage that uh, we've been get, getting traditionally, um, it would be a tough call maybe to get um, maybe even 30% uh, of the um, of the uh, of the registered voters, which is just like you said about 148,000. Um, and even if you get that. Um, Presently, Abga is leading by about, uh, is leading uh, the, the, the next challenger, uh, Mr. Zibo, with about 52,000 votes. Um, so it, it, it will be quite uh, a tough one, really, for um, any of these uh, candidates to, um, to best uh, Abga, because again, at, at, at any rate, um, you know that Abga won't also be uh, be just holding their hands. They will also be in the game, just like they've been in the other in the other local governments. Um, so it, it's quite uh, it's going to be quite tough for for any of these other people to uh, or candidates to upstage uh, Abga, even though from the pillars we are getting, uh, you know, we understand that. Um, um, even the YPP candidate, uh, uh, Senator Ifanye Oba, uh, 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 is doing uh, quite well, you know, in, in, in the election, uh, maybe uh, best in uh, some of the other candidates. So, but uh, it's definitely going to be, you know, too close to call, especially for the, the other candidates mm. as regards uh, upstaging uh, Afghan. But uh, the, the election for now is uh, done and dusted as regards voting. So we'll probably see what's going to happen in the next uh, few hours. Let's talk about the, um, the incident that happened today, the gunshots uh, and the uh, you know, um, face-off between um, soldiers and um, IPOB members. We, we have seen the election go smoothly in almost every area of the state. Why Ihiala? Why a sudden surfacing of these so-called gunmen um, trying to scuttle the electoral, electoral process? Do you have any, any idea why this would be? Uh, I must say um, it, it's, uh, it's my, my, my knowledge is restricted to what I've read uh, online and so I wasn't at Ihiala today. So uh, but to that extent, um, what I can also tell you, since you mentioned IPOB, is that I'll be extremely reluctant to think that this is um, these are IPOB uh, members. You know, I'll be extremely reluctant because um, I know it from excellent authority that you know the highest command uh, in IPOB, you know, decided that this this election should go ahead. And uh, in fact, declared that anyone trying to uh, do otherwise would be declared as um, uh, a saboteur. Um, so uh, I doubt that this is this is an IPOB. Uh, so you're telling me. So you're telling me that con um, contrary to what the papers are reporting, or what media, or whatever information that was give fed to the media, you're telling me that these are not necessarily IPOB members. That these could be caricatures or people who are trying to give IPOB a bad name. Uh, possibly people who are trying to give IPOB a bad name, possibly uh, even uh, candidates who may think that they may gain advantage by, you know, fomenting violence. But um, IPOB, I, I, I extremely doubt it. I extremely doubt it. I know that IPOB was uh, totally committed to this process going ahead. So I, I, I don't, I don't, I won't blame this on IPOB or even uh, ESM. I would think that someone is trying to gain advantage uh, politically. Okay. Back to you, Gabriel. Um, a lot of people have said that they experienced uh, some level of vote buying uh, during the whole process in different parts uh, of the state. Um, in my polling units, I did see a little bit of that. Um, 
in the guise of trying to give voters some food and water, money was exchanging hands. Uh, and one would hope that in, in, in a situation like this, especially that we are in 2021 and hoping for free, fair and credible elections, that this would some, somewhat um, be played down on. Uh, but tell me what you as Yaga uh, experience in terms of vote buying. Uh, Gabriel, can you hear me? Gabriel, are you there? Can you hear me? I think we uh, lost that connection with Gabriel, so I'm going to come back to you um, uh, by some way. Okay, so did you experience any form of vote buying? Did you see with your eyes or did you hear where they... We saw a couple of videos that made, made it to the internet, but um, while you were there, did you experience any at your polling unit? Yes, I can. I can assure you that there was a massive incidence of uh, vote buying, um, uh, because um, on the, this 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 is quite this was quite uh, predominant, and um, uh, honestly, you would, you would think it was more like a, a bazaar, you know, and uh, even some level of haggling. So um, a, a, a vote, a prospective voter, a voter comes and. Uh, and maybe it is is canvassed by one one party, and um, it's like, how much are you offering? And if it's two k or one k, uh, he will he will probably walk around and uh, ask the other party or be canvassed by the other party. So at the end of the day, he or she goes for the highest bidder. So um, this was massive, and in fact. Uh, a lot of a lot of uh, incidences. It wasn't even only uh, a lot of um, a lot of things were actually thrown at um, at, at 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 voters. Mm -hmm. You see a situation where some a party actually was sharing uh, uh, clothes or wrappers, you know, and of course this would be on election day. To, uh, th to this this was happening on election day. Was this happening? Uh, certainly, on certainly. It wasn't even. It was at the polling. It was at the polling unit. So they, they weren't hiding it. You know, it was like you 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 go and vote. You come. You're probably given two thousand, and you're given a wrapper. So of course, if you have another party that is offering uh, maybe only one thousand, that party is certainly disadvantaged. And um, actually, we have had cases of parties offering as much as ten thousand, five thousand. You know. Uh, during the election, and um, of course, uh, food. In fact, we had of instances where, you know, a particular party will come in the morning. They say, take two thousand go for breakfast. Then you come back when you vote. Um, you, you take another, you know, uh, portion. And uh, I think it was three layered. So, uh, and then of course you saw, you know, some parties again bringing food to the to the polling unit sharing food given to INEC officials and policemen. You know, also INEC officials and policemen, I guess most if not all the parties, you know, had um, a budget for them. And but, if you but, don't, you're but likely I, I, to I'm, be I'm more curious. I'm more curious to the resilience of the Anambra people because from what the feelers I got while I was in the field, um, that uh, the average Anambra person cannot be induced. No matter how much money you pay, uh, no matter how much money you seem to offer them, you cannot change their mind in terms of voting. Um, the, the truth of the matter is that, yes, uh, of course, people, some people may really be deeply committed to a particular party, you know. Um, so to that extent, they may as well actually collect your money and still vote uh, their conscience, quote and unquote, hmm. you know. But otherwise, um, that 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 uh, thesis uh, that wasn't what I experienced during the election. Especially, okay. most of the buyers were were for the you know for what? the highest bidder, so to okay. speak. All right, quickly, before we wrap up, Gabriel is back with us. Gabriel, I was asking a question before we lost you that um, 
Did you experience okay. any form of voter buying, um, um, vo um, vote buying, I beg your pardon? Uh, did you see any form of inducements at the different polling uh, units that you visited? Um, because we're, we're talking about how we can do away with vote buying, especially uh, on election day. Uh, we see all kinds of inducements, maybe campaign periods just before the election. Uh, but what we were really looking forward to free, fair and credible elections in Anambra. Did you experience any such? Okay, um, voter inducement in Nigeria is becoming a culture, thereby you can hardly, like, you can hardly go to a particular polling unit and say that you will not experience one or two forms of voter inducement, even though as even the for, for this and uh, their commission and also security agency trying to deter people from engaging maybe other political parties or their agents and getting them maybe buying voters vote at that particular place so voters and their uh, political party agents they try to devise another new means for voter inducement in just some of the few really that we uh, went to yeah maybe we deployed our observers to go and observe there are some form of new form of tactics that they normally deploy, whereby even it's difficult for even observers to take note of that. Whereby they will drag, they will drag, uh, they will drag uh, this uh, potential voter aside and then tell him who to vote for, give him some kind of statements by the side, and then later the person will come to the polling unit and go and cast his vote. So those part of those kind of voters inducement is relatively difficult to track. Yeah, okay. it's difficult to track. If not, maybe sometimes you may just say that, okay, let me go and take a pee. And then you then see somebody at the backyard of a classroom trying to give people money. Maybe they'll tell you that this is a person that I vote for. So those kind of things, people, political parties, other agents, they are devising a lot of different means mm -hmm. for voters in this one. And the new methods, the new strategies that was adopted also helps to reduce this form of voters inducement whereby you are not allowed to go to a particular polling in order to go to the polling the voting cubicle with mm. your phone a security agent will be beside there and tell you that okay if you have any phone with you can you give kindly give me after you cast your vote you drop it in the ballot box then you get it back that has also plays a lot of role in terms of reducing the rate of voters inducement in the field wow well gentlemen we are keeping our fingers crossed hoping to hear uh, from the coalition center in ihiala that's the local government uh, coalition center at 9 p.m and then of course we will find out uh, what the results for tonight's elections uh, will be. But Emeka Nwadioke is a legal practitioner uh, and Gabriel Prince is the programs officer at Yaga Africa. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being part of this conversation. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break. And when we return, we focus on Mena's pension fraud. And, of course, the two banks that may be indicted in this. Stay with us.